I just wanted to go through my impressions of my own personal 2018 Nissan Leaf. I've had it now for about two months and I've put about 5,700 and change kilometers on this car. Um, I just can't believe how much driving I've done in this. Uh, my typical drive to work and back is about uh, 45 to 55 kilometers depending on the route that I take. Uh, so let's say 50, cut it down the middle. Um, this is our primary vehicle uh, that I use all the time to go back and forth to work. So I've put over 5,000, almost 6,000 uh, kilometers on the car. Um, I have to admit I have not put it through its range paces yet. I've only basically driven within a daily range of the Leaf. Uh, right now at these temperatures here in Ontario, southern Ontario, We've had a hot summer. We've had some days where we get 45 degrees Celsius, 46 degrees Celsius with the Humidex. Certainly without the Humidex into the 30s. Uh, we've had uh, some cooler nights, but it's been a pretty warm summer since I've picked up the car. It's been fairly warm. I've had no issues in, um, in charging overnight. I have a level two charger at home. So when I get home, I plug it in and uh, let it charge to full, I wake up, depending on the temperature, anywhere from about 270 to 290 kilometers of range. Again, that's the gasometer uh, that Nissan uh, has uh, to calculate your range based on battery charge and state of health and all those good numbers. So it is a guess, depending on my driving habits. Obviously, with the heat that we've had, I've used the AC a lot. I'm not afraid to use the AC like it would have been on a gas car where I'm really going to watch the gas get sucked away when the uh, AC kicks in. Uh, this uh, is pretty energy efficient when it comes to using the air conditioning and it does cool down really fast and then I can lower the fan speeds and keep it at, uh, uh, you know, at, at a very quiet uh, experience from that perspective. So I have used the air conditioning, uh, but again, I, I've taken some trips from where we live just north of Brampton. We've taken some trips to the Collingwood, Ontario area. We've done that twice. We've done a Wasega Beach run. We've gone to Barrie. Um, we've gone to, um, through work, I've gone to Brantford, Ontario, which is past Hamilton Way. Um, I've gone to Scarborough, the east side of Toronto, and downtown Toronto and back a couple of times. Uh, um, and, and, and have used the Nissan Leaf for all of those trips and have not had to charge the Leaf during the day. So what that means I wake up in the morning with a full charge, I go out and do what I have to do and I come back home and I still have enough battery. Even one of the Collingwood trips where we thought, um, uh, sorry, the Wasega Beach where I thought, uh, you know, I might get a little low, uh, we had more than enough and it's about 120K each way uh, from where we are to Wasega Beach to where we went. So it's about 240K. So I had it fully charged, went, came back, and still had some juice left. So that was probably the closest I got to um, anything near 10% of battery charge. So my impressions of the Leaf two months later, I'm loving it. I haven't changed my thoughts since day one. Um, the the interior has held up uh, very, very fine, as you can see by the, uh, the pictures that I've put up. Um, uh, I, again, I've had people in this. I've had four or five people uh, on a couple of occasions where we've packed this car in. Normally, it's myself or my wife and daughter, so three of us that travel. Uh, my wife and daughter love riding in this car because it is so quiet. It's very comfortable. They tend to fall asleep, so <laughs> when we're driving longer distances, that happens. Um, but the overall workmanship has held up. There's still no squeaks and rattles. Uh, nothing has come loose. Um, nothing's broke uh, that I can see anywhere. And I've, you know, again, I use this car as a daily car. I don't baby it. Um, I try to keep it clean when I can, but I'm not constantly washing and waxing the car uh, and all this kind of stuff. Um, I have not done anything to the car as far as any exterior, um, you know, coatings or films or anything like that. I've looked into it, but I just haven't had time. And frankly, they're they're kind of expensive right now, so I don't really want to want to do that. Um, I'm driving this as a normal everyday car. I'm not afraid to drive it on the highways. I'm not afraid to go up dirt roads or whatever. I, wherever I have to go, that's where I take this car. And I think that's that's what Nissan's designed the Leaf to do is just to be your everyday car. Um, instrumentation wise, everything is holding up uh, very, very well. I've had no issues, no electronic issues, um, anything like that. Um, I do use Eco and um, the e-pedal pretty well all the time. Um, I just leave it on. Uh, I did run about a week without Eco on just to kind of see if I got a range difference and it might have been very slight. I know there's a few other YouTubers that have um, reported on uh, on their thoughts about that. It doesn't seem to make a huge difference, but um, I just prefer 
to run on eco because when I don't run on eco, what I find myself is because I have that much more power available, I tend to actually drive faster and I get a little more aggressive, you know, um, it, it's, it's hard to describe. I'm not, I'm not cutting people off or anything like that or racing or anything like that. You just tend to drive a little bit more quicker. And the whole point of this car for me was to kind of slow down, you know, that whole, that whole driving experience. I don't want to be the fastest on the road. I don't want to be people, uh, beat people off the lights and this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm here to, you know, to drive a comfortable car uh, that has zero emission. So when I'm driving, I know that there's nothing going into the atmosphere from this vehicle while I'm driving it. And that's the state I want to stay in. So I find that with eco mode, because it does throttle down the, um, the amount of electricity, the amount of energy that, uh, that, that you have. Now, if you need to go, you stop on it and you'll get full power. So there's no problems in getting out of any situations or needing to accelerate quickly on an on-ramp or something like that. You're trying to merge with traffic and so forth. Um, so uh, that's the reason I leave it on eco mode. And that's just me. Uh, everybody's going to be different. But I find for my overall health, state of health, I guess if you want to say that, um, I just find it a much more pleasant experience if I'm not trying to gun this thing all over the place. It has the power. It, this thing will move. It's not a Model 3. It's not an S or an X. Certainly not a Camaro or Corvette or anything like that. It's not supposed to be. But it has enough power to get you where you need to go very adequately and 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 very and and i brought some people to show them the car some family and i've driven them around and they've been very surprised at the acceleration uh, that this thing has even with a couple of people in the car um i'm averaging about seven seven point two uh, kilometers per kilowatt hour of um uh, of energy and instrumentation instrumentation uh, perspective the best screen that i like is kind of the compass screen so it's, it has the compass and then it tells you the street you're on and it has a little icon to tell you the weather. i've learned after the first probably two to three weeks maybe almost a month where i was just constantly looking at numbers and had the drive computer on and i'm always looking at stuff i've, I've learned to kind of just ignore all that just get in the car and drive um, the only thing I do have, obviously, is I have um, the Leaf Spy app um, pro, uh, uh, installed on a on a, a secondary iPhone, an older iPhone that I have, and this phone is only used to run the Leaf Spy app. I, I picked up one of the uh, the uh, LE Link Two OBD Two um, uh, dongles, I guess, to communicate with it, and and I have that up on the screen um, on my dash here. I, I pretty well leave it on. Um, on this screen with the, with the compass. I mean, you know, there are lots of screens to choose from here. I do use the charge uh, time screen. I had it for a while on this screen because uh, I just was so kind of hung up on watching all the regen and watching the energy. And, uh, but now I don't, I don't really focus on that anymore. Um, like I said, I just, I just focus on getting in the car and driving it. Um, there's my driving computer again. When it gets to 9999, it kind of sits there. That's, that's the highest it goes. Uh, you have to actually reset it to, uh, to kind of start... Um, um, uh, resetting things. Um, I'll reset the driving distance because I don't, I, I don't want to really uh, reset my energy economy. It's been like that since day one. But you know, there's a lot of functionality, tire pressure. I kind of, I'm an old school when it comes to tire pressure. I will uh, take the, uh, uh, my t I have a really good tire gauge, pressure gauge, and I'll use that. There's a screen that shows you the speedometer in digital. So if you're, if you wanted to uh, get that, some people are complaining of the analog and then your cruise. As far as uh, leaf spy goes, um, yeah, so I have a, a, a similar to what um, Lemon Tea Leaf James did. Um, I got one of these magnetic mounts and uh, just mounted uh, mounted it here to the dash. And then uh, it's not the same one he got, but it's uh, pretty close. And there's a magnet inside the case. And then this thing just sits there. And I leave it charged and uh, uh, goes. So it keeps all my stats as far as state of health, uh, state of charge. I predominantly use this for state of charge and for battery temperatures. And I have yet in this heat to exceed about 42 degrees Celsius. I have not exceeded that temperature. And that's driving some highway driving all day when it's 40 some odd degrees humid X. So as I mentioned, I, I haven't had the necessity to rapid charge. And I know we're all familiar with, with the throttling that the Nissan does from a rapid charge perspective. Uh, I do plan on taking a couple of long distance work trips um, that are going to take me to have to do one rapid for sure, in some cases, maybe two. So I'll be able to get a better judge. But again, I already know what to expect. Um, James and some other some other data has come out as well, which uh, he put a put a great uh, graph together as far as what your battery temperature and what you expect, what you should be pulling from a DC 
Chatham will fast charger uh, relative to the battery temperature of the car. Some of them are guesses, but he seems to be pretty close. So I keep that chart handy with me in the glove box so that if I do need to pull over, I can check my battery temperature release by and charge it up and get an idea of what kind of rate I'm going to get so I know how much time I need to spend uh, depending on where I'm going. So I can come plan that out a little bit more. Um, really, the car has just been running great. Um, I've been in some really strong downpours of rain. I've had no handling issues. I've been in some driving some very windy days that we've had here. And I, the car has really planted, obviously, EVs uh, with the, especially battery EVs with, with the extra weight that we have down low and center, uh, really keeps the car planted. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the seat has held up fine. Uh, I'm not the lightest guy on the planet, but I'm not the heaviest guy either. And for me, ergonomically, this car ha has been great. Um, one thing I do want to point out, down here in the foot well, so I, um, they, the wheel well arches do intrude a little bit into the, uh, into the floor space of the, of the driver uh, and the passenger, but not as much as the passenger. It seems to be more of the driver. Yeah, you can see that that foot well uh, it intrudes a little bit. And my foot is about straight, but on longer drives, I do find that I, I wish it was just a little bit more to the left there. Um, there is a ledge that you can actually put your foot up like this when the door is closed. Um, so you can move it around. There's no really, uh, there is a bit of a, what they call, the, you know, the dead man's pedal there, dead foot pedal. But um, I wish it was a bit more left. I wish this was just a little bit less pronounced on some of the longer drives. It hasn't really been a problem. Um, you know, I'll shift in the seat and I'll find a comfortable position. Right, folks, I've moved inside because it got pretty windy out there, and I just wanted to supply a few minutes of closing comments surrounding the cost of how much it is to operate this vehicle, because that's a pretty important question that I get asked a lot. And how I can figure that out is pretty straightforward. Nissan has an app called Nissan Connect, and it's a pretty good app. It actually gives you a lot of functionality. Um, it takes Sometimes it takes a few tries to connect to the vehicle, but it, it, like a lot of EVs, Nissan has a telematics part to the car, so it's always sending data up to the Nissan servers. And as long as you have a subscription to the application, you can connect and get all that data and do different things with it. And on the main screen, you can do things like uh, put climate control on and off. Uh, you can set a timer for that, so you want to pre heat or pre-cool the car before you go out, unlock and lock your doors, uh, honk your horn, flash your lights, that kind of stuff. So it works pretty good. Sometimes it might take a few seconds to connect for an action. Sometimes it may take a couple of minutes. It's, uh, it's very uh, back and forth on that. But one of the great things that the app has is detailed information. As I mentioned, all, every single trip that, uh, that I do in this car or, or a trip is defined as every time I push the on and off button of the Leaf, it sends that data up to the Nissan servers and I can uh, get that data back in various forms. And one of the reports that I like to look at is something called the EcoDrive Evaluation Report. And here's the screen for May, and it actually just basically shows a history of averages, um, and it bases that on a kilometers per kilowatt hour uh, of an average um, energy use in the LEAF. So as you can see, it's between seven and eight, sometimes uh, in the low sixes, depending on uh, driving, if I'm driving very fast, a lot of highway driving, using a lot of accessories and so forth. And here's a uh, slide for the month of June. Uh, I got a pretty well a full month of data, a little bit of traveling, so I didn't use the car sometimes. Uh, but as you can see, fairly consistent around that seven, seven and a half uh, kilometers per kilowatt hour range. And then for July, here's another slide that, that shows uh, current usage up until uh, to the taping of this episode so you get an idea of averages so I can also look at a year to date uh, for a driving records uh, perspective so when I factor that into the months uh, I look at look at something called driving records and so I take that average economy and this is where I can actually see the distance traveled and how it calculated that so for the month of May you can see I've done just over 1300 kilometers uh, with an average energy economy of 7.5 kilometers per kilowatt hour and uh, energy electric consumption which I'll come back to in a moment uh, some travel time and a pretty important to me stat is the CO2 savings of 243 kilograms of greenhouse gas emissions that will, will, did not go into the atmosphere. So I think that's pretty important. So that's for the month of May and the month of June. Here's a slide that talks about, or that shows 20, just over 2,500 kilometers that I drove and the stats associated with that, averaging about 7.1 kilometers per kilowatt hour. And that makes sense because it started heating up in June, getting more, more hotter. May was a more temperate month. I'm using more of the accessories, AC, and driving the car more as well. So it's got a better baseline for creating an average.
And for July, so forth, in the first three weeks of July, pretty well, 1,800, uh, just almost 1,900 kilometers, with an average energy economy of seven kilometers per kilowatt hour, down slightly. Again, it's been very hot this summer. I've got the air conditioning running a lot more and so forth, so my consumption is up. Now, one of the uh, uh, things I can gather from all that data is a year to date. So here's a slide that shows me my total distance traveled. And as I mentioned earlier on in this episode, I've done almost 6,000 kilometers or just over 5,700 kilometers to be precise. And my average economy is 7.2 kilometers per kilowatt hour. That makes, that seems to be fit right into the groove uh, because looking at a lot of other leaf data and talking to owners out there, especially my friends in the UK, um, they're averaging around four, 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. So this seems to equate uh, very nicely with that. Um, and again, in very, temperate seasonal climates. Uh, in the UK, they've had some warm spells as well uh, for them. They've got in, into the 30s as well this summer. So that seems to be uh, what the going rate is. It, uh, and here, I want to hone in on the energy electric, electricity consumption of 800, just over 800 kilowatt hours to do that distance. Why that's important is because I'm going to get to a cost of how much it costs me to, do, to use 800 kilowatt hours of energy to uh, go 5,700 or so kilometers. Now, how it calculates energy use is, um, is a little unique, and I'm not sure if the other apps do that, but I assume that they do. So uh, it uses something called an electric rate simulation. And it's basically, a, uh, within the app, there's a section that uh, tells you how much uh, electricity you've used. So here is the slide for May. It's showing that I've used 230 uh, kilowatt hours of energy for the month uh, in driving the Nissan LEAF, but I generated back just over 52 kilowatt hours of electricity. So it nets me at a, just about 178 kilowatt hours of energy use. What that electricity generated uh, means is this is through regenerative braking. As I mentioned, I pretty well run this car all the time with e-pedal on, and e-pedal is phenomenal at, ca at capturing energy back from a regenerative braking process. And I can modulate that, the amount that's captured basically uh, based on my accelerated control, and, and uh, I've done some videos on um, that before, and you've seen some stuff out there on e-pedal. But why that's important is because what the app does is it takes the net electricity uh, generated or used for that month, and it uses an electricity rate of eight cents a kilowatt hour. Now, it won't let me change the rate for some reason on this app, but eight cents is actually pretty accurate for me. I only charge this car at home. You can see my level two uh, wall charger behind me here. And um, I only charge in off-peak hours to get the, the best rate for electricity. And uh, we have a three-tiered system here in Southern Ontario, or at least where I am through my provider. So it gives me uh, the lowest rate in the uh, off-tier. So based on those numbers, it's telling me that it's cost me about $12.45 for the uh, to pay for that energy that I've used to drive the LEAF for the month of May. And eight cents uh, per kilowatt hour is pretty close to what I'm paying. I've got a rate of six and a half cents for off-peak, uh, but add some delivery and some other fees that are part of the monthly bill, eight cents is probably pretty fair. Um, and that again is to go 1,300 kilometers. Uh, so it's almost $13 to go over 1,300 kilometers. It's an interesting correlation there. And then for the month of June, here's a slide from the electric rate simulation that tells me that uh, based on the net energy that I've used cost me about $25 uh, and that's to go about 2,500 or so kilometers. Again, there's an interesting correlation there, uh, averaging uh, in all uh, the 7.1 kilometers per kilowatt hour and so, and so on. And then for the month of July, the electro rate simulation um, uh, shows me so far that it's costed me uh, almost $19 um, to go about 1,900 kilometers. And why is that important? Because at the end of the day, I can calculate what really it's cost me to drive the 5,700 or so kilometers. Um, and uh, adding up these numbers, even if they're a little high, it's about $57 to go 5,700 or so kilometers. Um, if I compare that to an ICE vehicle, I have a Nissan Sentra or, and a Nissan Versa, uh, compact and subcompact cars, about 500 kilometers per tank uh, in city driving, average driving, can eke out more on all highway and so forth. But let's say you use 500, uh, cost me about $45 to fill those up because it never goes right to empty. So even if we say 40 bucks, it's about $450 to do that same mileage, 450 to $500 uh, versus uh, 
under sixty dollars. It's a lot less than actually that I thought it was going to be. I, I thought it was going to be about a quarter, maybe a fifth less of the cost of fuel. Uh, you know, again, that's the only cost that I've had. There's been no maintenance on the car. I've only had it a couple of months, and we all know that that EVs have lower maintenance uh, costs because their maintenance schedules are, are uh, more infrequent, and there's less stuff that you have to do for a maintenance. So I will get the tires rotated in the fall when I get winters put on and so forth, and I'm keeping track of, of all that stuff. So it's an interesting, um, uh, interesting stat that I can get uh, from um, the Nissan Connect app here. And that is really something that I take to, to people and, you know, I can look at these stats and I can pull them up and I can do the math and say, hey, you know, this is what it costs me. So I hope that's of interest to you. I hope that if you're, uh, if you're considering an EV and don't have one yet, again, another thing to consider is the operating cost. It's really hard to get a, to get a, a total uh, return on that investment per se. Um, you know, if you buy a, a, a Tesla, so you buy a Model 3, here in Canada they start at 47000 or 46 and change $1,000, um, add tax and all that stuff. Even saving $3,000 a, a year in fuel or $4,000 a year in fuel, you've got to keep that car for a long time to get your money back there. So, you know, you don't buy these ne necessarily just because of the full return on your investment. There is a partial return on that investment, but it's not total. You've got to look at other things. Uh, the ease of driving, the fun factor, that EV smile, the EV grin that we talk about. And of course, the number one reason is not contributing to greenhouse gas emissions through tailpipe emissions uh, because EVs don't have tailpipes, at least uh, battery electric, full electric uh, vehicles don't. So I hope uh, that's a great uh, um, summary of my first couple of months with the LEAF. I know it's a lot of information. I wanted to make sure that this was complete. If you have any questions or comments, please put them on YouTube or send me an email at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you and uh, answer questions. So until next time, thanks for watching and take care everybody.